Well, good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to the Norwood Country Club as NCM is pleased to present TVL golf action today as the Norwood Mustangs take on the Norton Lancers. Uh, along with Joe Devingo, Mark Hoover here. Happy to have you join us, Joe. On paper, this one looks like it'd be a pretty good matchup between these two squads. It does. It does. It's the, the uh, eight and four. I know Norton is. Noah's right up there too. So uh, just basically warming up, getting ready for that tournament coming up soon, hopefully. You know, it's 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 kind of interesting when we arrived. Uh, the Aggie High School is teeing off on on hole one. So the Norton and Norwood will be playing starting here on the the tenth today, where they normally go off on on the first hole. Joe, you've played this course a lot. Is there any difference between the front nine and the back nine? And if so, does it work in anybody's favor? Uh, the front, the back nine is a, it's straighter, but it's longer. It, there's a couple of long par fours out here that make it a little bit more difficult than the front nine. But uh, it's it's a little more straightforward. Like the, the front nine, if you're playing, then there's some nooks and crannies that you got to get used to. Some of the holes aren't as straight as, as they are back here. But uh, the course has actually been playing pretty good. It's it's a lot drier than it has been in the past. They put a lot of work into it, so we'll see. It should be a fun day for golf. They really have. It's funny you mentioned that because although it's you know a little overcast today, very comfortable, it should be dry. So we are about ready to tee off from the 10th, and we'll take it from there. And as mentioned, ready here uh, at the 10th as Norton's first two golfers will step up. I believe this is going to be uh, senior captain Sean Clary four-year varsity member here to lead off. Straight away there, fading a little to the right, but... Yeah, he played it more conservative. He used an iron on that one as opposed to his teammate here stepping up with a big bad driver. <laughs> yeah, well, it's interesting because we have seen sometimes, you know, the you get up with those those bigger drivers and sometimes things go a little bit far left and a little bit far right, but sophomore Mason Ball who according to coaches really improved in the off season will be the second golfer here for Norton. I talked to the Norton coach before and he said he's got a very young team. I yeah. He's got five sophomores out of the Yeah. Eight. Yeah, you look down there and this this Norton squad and sitting in at 8 and 4 right now is is very young. Again, it sounds like a I think he Missile might have hit it higher he's than he looking to. off left, but didn't quite see that. So the first two are way for Norton, and that'll bring up Frankie Sheehan and Jacob Sheehan. And that's Frankie. <laughs> my my question is, <laughs> what's what's their relation again? There is no relation between <laughs> Frankie and Jacob. Frankie and Rocco are Sheehan, our brothers. There will be quizzes later on on Norton uh, Norwood relations but one of the two senior captains taking that iron and also kind of a little left, and I think that got over the netting. It looks like it might have. We were talking about on my golf game, what's nice about that netting is if you hit it, it'll ricochet <laughs> it right back in. So Yeah, I like backstops. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Both Norwood players looks like they're going to play it a little more conservatively with the irons. up in the air but that looks like it's just going to kind of blow back left yeah nicely yeah and there's something to be said for that right especially for your first you know first time teeing off maybe something a little bit straight away the, f the first hole is always the hardest because everybody's sitting here watching yeah you. yeah and that's especially for the first four yeah because the entire both entire teams are sitting here watching yeah. So the second one also goes into the uh, revamped driving range that they have been putting a lot of work it into has. here. They're Very excited. From that's supposed to be open in a couple of weeks. It'd be so great. It looks really good. Yeah, yeah. As they say, third time is the charm. Yeah. So that first group is away. Griffin Clary and Jack Regan will be 
up at some point next for Norton. Those who aren't familiar, the format I believe is every each team sends off eight golfers, two in each, two Noah, two Norton, and four different foursomes, and they score the best six out of the eight, add them all up, and find a winner at the end. And as uh, they say, low score wins, right? Low score yes. wins, right. yes. Once you figure that out, it makes <laughs> golf a lot easier. <laughs> the, re the way I play it is, you know, I figure if I'm going to pay my money to play, I might as well get as many shots in as possible. <laughs> yeah, this walking exactly. stuff is for the birds. If I'm going to go play 18 <laughs> holes and I'm only going to shoot 70, I'm not getting my money's <laughs> worth. Right. I usually judge my game by, you know, if I start with like a dozen balls in my bag hey, and I end there with you go. like 11, then yep. I've had a good day. Yep. So while we uh, wait for that second group to tee off, we will be back right after this. Uh, the best sport of all time is golf. The best hype song is Champions, and the, but the best place to get food in Norwood is Pizza Palace. The, the best sport of all time is hockey. The best hype song is, I don't know, Eye of the Thunder or something like that. And the best place to get food in Norwood is Lewis's. The best sport of all time is hockey. The best hype song of all time is Lose Yourself by Eminem. And the best place to get uh, food in Norwood is Pizza Palace. Best sport of all time is uh, golf. The best hype song is uh, Superstar. And the best place to get food in Norwood is uh, Pizza Palace. The best sport of all time is pickleball. The best hype song is the boom song. And the best place to get food in Norwood is Express Pizza. The best sport of all time is the cross. The best hype song of all time is Dreams and Nightmares by Meek Mill. And the best place to get food in Norwood is Pizza Palace. The best sport of all time is baseball. The best hype song is Can't Hold Us by Macklemore. And the best place to get food in Norwood is Feisty Greek. And back here on 10, as the second group is ready, and Norton Teen off here, that would be Griffin Clary, a sophomore for Norton, co-MVP last year as just a freshman, so good solid player there. I lost, I lost his tee shot, I'm not sure where that went. Could have went straight, I just don't know. <laughs> and another sophomore we talked about this being a young team, two sophomores here as your seconds. And see, he's going to—he's pulling to Mark Hoover. <laughs> he's in he's play. Gonna, he's in play. He's going to try That's to. That's playable. Next. Looks yep. like the 150 marker right there. And he's like just before that, you got some <laughs> sort of branches right there, but I think he's in, he's in good shape. So that was Jack Regan, who's been putting in about shooting about a 41 so far this year for the Lancers. There we go. That's exactly how you want to kind of start off, right? Yep. yep. Nice little conservative. Yep. Right down the middle. Looks like he used like a three wood, maybe five, maybe a five wood. Yeah. Nice and smooth. Tommy, that's Tommy O'Brien. I played with Tommy a little couple of weeks ago. Very, very consistent golfer. Yeah, it's a battle here of sophomores yeah, here in this four. second group, all four. Sometimes it's hard to pick the ball up off the tee with the white clouds. Yeah, yeah. But I think he might have went out of play. Also, he's going to his bag to reach for another ball, Max Conley. And again, it, it certainly sounds, you know, impressive coming off of there. But yeah. again, you're probably a little amped up here to start. Yeah, he pulled that one. Yeah. That 
right. He pulled the Pull two, but it has a little bit of a fade to it, maybe. Yeah, he's going to put that driver away. I think uh, Coach Allen might have suggested something a little bit less. So that's so kind of the same as what we two out of the four had before. Yeah, I think. Off of the yeah, front. yep. This is he's sitting five right now. It's hard, so hard to tell if that's going to stay. I've, I'm following it. I think he's like trying to see if that if that did stay. They're checking. Coach Allen checking. I think actually some of the Norton golfers might have tried to picked it up. Norton coach right there, kind of a shrug. They're not quite sure if it. But nonetheless, he's going to have to do another one here. This is where it gets a little tough, right? You know, you're getting yourself. Certainly is. It's because, you know, this this game is it probably 110 percent mental. That's one. Uh, that should uh, play. Yeah. So you kind of get the little sense of that frustration is yeah. to try to push it out of your mind. And that's the the big yeah. trick is you can't let one shot affect the next one. And that's right. the hardest part about yep. golf. Exactly, exactly. So second group is away, and we'll get ready for the third group. Ready here for uh, group three. It looks like uh, Adam Caldwell, the sophomore, will be stepping up here. He's only a sophomore? Yeah, no, actually, I'm sorry. This is probably Owen Musto. He's the senior. Yeah, His partner is Adam Caldwell. Yep. So this is Musto. but going right and over the trees. I don't think anybody's really had any shots they could be completely happy with here off this first tee box. After the first shot, for sure. Yeah. There have been a couple later that have, but yeah, but if you're taking your third or fourth shot, but yeah, there hasn't been anything that someone, you know, here on the 10th has been kind of pleased with. So we'll see if Adam Caldwell, this is the sophomore here. Going with a hooded sweatshirt look today. And he, he is going to find one. the driving range. Here's a little body language to see yep. if we can get it to stay in play. Maximo. So I think Maximo was going, to, was going to step in, and yeah, so Owen's going to let Maximo do his thing. So I believe Max, he's the only junior in the bunch today. He is the only one playing, yep. Uh, Jason Gillis and Mark Trahan, the other juniors, are not playing today. We had a couple of seniors go out earlier before we started with Sam Gurney, Jack Weifer. Got a chance to get out there. Jack Forbush also earlier today before we got started, but this is Maximo here. That one's. At least he's looking straight down the fairway. He is, but it went off to the left, I believe. He's not quite sure, but we got yeah, Ron Marshall see on the camera. He was kind of pointing a little in that direction as well. So Caldwell. Got his for his second here. So he's hitting three yeah. right now. And that well, one's in there. play. It's definitely in play. And that is probably going to be about 200 yards out from that. That has got Mark Hoover Drive written all <laughs> over it, except it went further. Something like that you can find easily because it leaves the whole entire like a trail as it goes through. 
Cuts the rug, cuts the uh, grass. So Rocco Sheehan here. Rocco's going to go yeah, with an iron. iron. And the lefty. And he pulls it. He pulls it. Hit a tree. I didn't see it bounce out, but yeah. might be playable down in there somewhere. And it looks like Maximo is was further left, and he has taken a slightly less club here for this next one. It is a, it's a 300-yard par four, so you can use less of a club and well, get it to one within 150. And that, that is one. going to get left as well. You know, I think that's kind of exactly what Coach Allen was saying uh, between a couple of groups here is that, you know, this is something that you don't need to, you know, absolutely crush it on this par mm -hmm. four. Play it part way down on a nice solid iron. And I think that's exactly, you know, what Maximo's doing now. You can see he's coming back with that iron. Certainly not the start that the Mustangs were looking for. No, not at all. And as uh, Coach Allen said, it's it's a tough match when you start out like this to kind of work your way back in. So the Mustangs will have an uphill battle. We'll put this one squarely on Devingo's shoulders. <laughs> That's see, right. that's, that's straight. Yeah. Play. You know, it's one of those that boy, if if you had started with that, you know, again, it's not long, it's not deep, but it's nope. straight away and it's in play. It's about 150 yep. yards away. So yeah, that second shot, that's where the money's made. Right. Exactly. You know? Yep. Yep. And, and then you that push second your shot yeah. within three feet of the mm -hmm. pin, as opposed to where I end up <laughs> in the bunker next yeah. to the uh, the green. So it'd be interesting to see. As we get ready for this final group, how many kind of start to pull out irons? I'm looking here. I see at least a couple have got irons. There's still a driver for one of the Norwood golfers, but it looks like it's going to be two and two. So we'll check that group out next. And back here for the fourth pairing. Yes, I think this is going to be Cole O'Connell. It's his first year of varsity. Yet another sophomore. Solid, but peeing a bit right over by the trees there. So these guys got to learn how to play the slice. Yeah, like aim to the left of them. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and his partner Owen can tell us. Interesting here. Little known fact, Owen, a senior, one of the few seniors on this team, matter of fact, the two seniors, Owen is the other one, is a uh, an employee of the Norwood Country Club. Is he really? He really is. He so my advantage. sense is that you talk about home course advantage. Now, Owen probably heard us talking about his working knowledge of the, so. He might know something he we don't. Yep. Yeah. That ball might actually be in play, and it might be better off than some of the other it, shots. You know, I mean, if, if at least his second shot, he'll be playing two as opposed to 12, yeah. so. Seamus, looks like he's going to actually use an iron, which should be hopefully advantageous to him. Oh, now, see, I mean, you know, yep. yeah, and I, I can there hear Coach is. Allen off to his left, goes, <laughs> I'll take that. What was nice about he's that, it was soft, it was smooth, he wasn't trying, he... Yep. The notion of let the club do the work, exactly. right? You know, I've heard that so many times that you, you're sitting there and you're trying to force it. And he's sitting in the middle of the fairway yeah. and he's about a, eh, off to the left a little bit, but he's but about he's 150 yeah. yards out. So. And a little bit off right, but playable. I believe it is playable. So everybody is away here with the final group. Trying to make sure they it's, can it's just uh, it should be just on the other side of the just on the other uh, side of, of the, the trees the there creek yeah there. so yeah. all four groups are away here coach Allen not as pleased with the start but you know they got to play all nine so let's just see what the Mustangs can do here as we leave the tenth 
and head for other portions of the course. We have made our way over here to the green on the par 5 12, where the first group is just approaching the green here. We've got three on. There's nothing to catch there on that far That's side. Is Frankie Sheehan. Sheehan had found the fairway here on the 13th to our right. And Punched it through, but a little hard. There's a nice chip there. He's safely on if that'll bite. Yeah, it looks like he'll stay on. A little bit easier than his shot before that. Coming yeah, that was a... Direction. He had a hard, very difficult shot coming from way off to the right. He had a lot of trees that he couldn't get, couldn't get the ball up in the air. He had to go low, and he went low and too far, too hard. I believe this is the sophomore here, Mason Ball for Norton. Uh, leaves his a little short. These are tough greens when you're not really used to them because a lot of them look like they're going to break and they don't. As much as it looks like it's going to break, they all they always seem to go straight. And senior captain Sean Clary here for his putt. See that rise and coming all uphill. Yeah. It's a nice putt. I mean, when you're 30, 40 feet out, you kind of want to basically get the uh, like a two foot radius around the hole where you kind of want to get to there. You know, yep. so you're not trying to make the putt. You're trying to get close enough that you can make the next one easy. That's the part, hard part, too, there with Sheehan's putt from up high is that if you leave that past it, it can continue to roll because mm -hmm. you have the downhill past. Airport's open. <laughs> Trying to weed whatever break he could. So back to Mason Ball for his second. He's got the old school golf shoes on. He does, those yeah. Are nice. Oh, Ooh, I hate when that happens. Oh, and you can see that too. Is that? Yep. You can't we, really we see, can't the, see the angle here, but, are, but, but, you, but you knew that that caught the lip <laughs> as it just came to a sudden stop. So, ball will pick that up. But you're right. Yeah, he's got the uh, tapped yeah. in there. Wearing the uh, Norton Lancer purple. Yep. Looking sharp with the red hair. Too. Yeah. He's got some hockey hair going. Yeah. So, Clary, see if he can two putt this one. Gonna be a little bit of a culture shock for the Norton team because they usually play their home games yeah, at TPC. TPC. Norton. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe That's Sean nice Hennessy will let yeah. us play over there sometime. 
I'm lucky if I'm allowed to come in and watch. <laughs> Clary with a nice two putt there, as mentioned there. Joe, he was fairly far away, and Sheen's able to get yep. his through. But uh, nice job there by by Clary, because that's a you mentioned that's that's a long putt. You want to get yourself in that close area to make that second one is a little bit easier. So that first group is now through 12 as they will head to the par 3 13th, which is just off to our right. And we'll catch that. And Ray right here on the par 3, this same group just finishing up 12. Sean Clary will lead things off. I don't know. Do you have the uh, the yardage on this one, the, Joe? It's usually, off the whites? I don't have it on me, but it usually plays about 140, maybe. Yeah, it's a nice straight you away. A, you have a Ron Marshall C, our spotter, cameraman extraordinaire. 131 from the whites today. This is one of the tougher greens in the entire course. Because if you look, you can't really see it from here, but the, uh, there's a hill. You, so if the, the T, the, the hole is up on the hill, you definitely want to get up closer to it on the ridge. It's a nice it shot there, there by Ball, putt. trying to look through the woods. And he is, yeah, oh, it just left a little short, yeah, but still. Yeah. You know, straight away anyway. This is usually one of those holes where I take out one of the used balls I have in my bag and I just dump, dump it right in that pond over there. <laughs> I cut out the middle, man. Yep. Sacrifice it to the water gods yep. and then get on to the get on with the play. It's Coach Allen making his rounds to see uh, how the Mustangs are doing as we've got the uh, second group coming up here behind us on 12. Sounded nice. Come up a little short, but... Takes a nice roll, just on the cart path, but quick little chip there, so he is on the path. So maybe by this stage, you know, Joe, some of the, uh, it's also a nice swing. Some of the nerves have kind of, you know, you kind of get into a slight groove trying to look through the trees there to see if anybody's on the green, but. It doesn't look like anybody is. Yeah. So that group leads away and we can swing around this way and be able to pick we up shift. group number two. And we'll get that group next. Ready here with group two. Looks like a couple of Norwood guys are waiting for one of the Norton players to be able yeah, to get where like he is. Yeah, the Norton, a couple of the Norton guys are over there trying to find the ball. It somehow ended up in the trees. I think that's uh, Griffin Clary, who is probably looking for his. Tyler helping out there, part of the coaching staff. Coach Allen's son, also heavily involved in Norwood hockey, both during the summer. Nice approach there by Jack Regan. That ball always seems to sit when you want it to roll. Yeah. <laughs> and vice versa. Yep. And yet at the same time, where you can see where Regan's ball is sitting right there. At least it didn't roll back down to the edge of the uh, green. So managed to stick it. He's at least below the hole. Yep. So it looks like they are still looking for Clary's ball. I think when we were getting ready, I probably heard it rattle around in some in some trees. So tough shot for Clary as I can see him now through the trees trying to play that one out. It's always a lot more difficult to find your balls in the fall when the leaves start falling. Trying to find it, you can so miss up underneath. You can see here. Oh, that's a nice little shot right there. Well done by Griffin Clary to come out of that. It was low into the ground but he got himself up on the uh, up on the green so
That's a beautiful shot. I mean, like, that's one of the hardest shots in golf right there, in my opinion. I mean, it, just off the edge of the green and trying to... He does have a lot of green to work with, which is nice. Makes it a little bit easier, but it's still a difficult shot. Yeah, Coach Allen was talking, you know, huge praise here. And I see Tommy O'Brien also. That's a really nice yeah, shot. Two really the good two shots right between, there. Yeah, between Conley and O'Brien. O'Brien shot a 34 the other day against Millis. Mustangs 5-0 and at home right now this year. An average of 236 they've been putting up in their matches so far. So everybody's safely on here at the 12th. Yeah, it's uh, several bumps there on the way up. Yeah. Are they sitting four or are they sitting three? I didn't know. So both of them really nice, really nice approach shots on like nice little chip shots from just off the green there for both of them. Yeah, that was a really good shot out of the woods. Larry a little disappointed with himself, but still a nice putt uphill. Leaves himself probably a little shorter than he would have liked. So let's see what Max can do here. He's putting downhill. Yeah, which is not nice. Easy. Yeah, you get a little nervous, right? You want to give the ball a little ride, but you don't want it to take off on you. Looks like that's a nice little touch right there. Yeah, nice job. Nice yep. Conley's got to be pleased with that. As Clary sets up for his second. Oh, that's a nice putt. That's a nice job by by Clary. As mentioned, a four-year varsity member. He, Joey had been in the woods. That's a little, kind of a little delay getting up here. and Managed to find it in kind of a low shot. Put him on the green and then two putted there. That's a nice job by that senior. Regan leaves it just short. And we'll see what Tommy O'Brien can do here. Mustangs head out tomorrow, out to Pinecrest, where they will take on Halston, Ashland, and Millis. So a big, big week for the Mustangs. Got Norton here today. They had Medfield with a nice win on Monday. So it's a full week of golf for the Mustangs. Nothing wrong with that. Mm -hmm. As mentioned, I tell you, Norton, they had come in here and they started out the season with eight and one record, and they were just on fire. And they kind of this past week took three straight losses, but to certainly some of the quality programs that we have here in the TVL, Dover, Shearborn, and Westwood, and Hopkinton. So playing some of the uh, that was a great bogey, good save, better squads there. Dover Shearborn finds themselves at eight and four in the TVL small. As mentioned, the Mustangs six and two in the TVL large. And quickly we pan over here to 13. And we gotta kinda look over our right shoulder and hopefully Coach Allen will let us know if we're about to get struck in the melon <laughs> by a golf ball. Or he might not. One yeah, of the Norton yeah. players just like literally just dropped one right next to the hole. Yeah. It just stuck there. That was a really nice shot. So back over here at 13 on that par 3, 130. Yeah, Gregan with a nice looking shot. And it's kind of, you have to kind of look through the woods here in the 13th to try to pick up where that goes, but he seemed pleased with it. 
as Clary will step up here on 13 as well. It's a par five back here, and he's on in three. Can't complain about that. Clary as well, safely away. You know, it's one of those, I think, as mentioned, that maybe by the time you've got a few holes, you know, under your belt, you feel a little bit better about it, but you can just try to look at Griffin's body language there. May not have been as pleased with it. I am so looking through the woods, and so one of the two Norton players is on the green, because I can see it. Sometimes it always, it's like a, a snowball effect. I don't know what the word I'm looking yeah. for, but it was just, just it just one thing happens and yep. then it just keeps yep. the, it keeps getting worse. Yeah. That looked really nice. Sounded good. Trying to look through the woods here to see if it can looking over there and Tyler is saying he's a little left, so Tommy O'Brien a little left, and we'll see what Max Conley can do here. As this last of the second group goes off on 13. And not seeing anything through there, but everybody seems to be straight away, and off that group we'll go. And we'll be moving back here to 12 to catch the third group. Can't say I haven't chunked a shot like that uh, a lot. chipped up but then decided to use the putter to get himself Maximo onto the green. So Maximo DeLuca on for Norwood. And Owen Musto just off to our right is the Norton player that had plopped that one right in there. So he's in great shape. That's the problem with getting good shots all the time is you got to wait around for everybody else. Exactly. See, that's when they should play golf with me. <laughs> Adam Caldwell, the sophomore here for Norton. That's a nice look too. Again, kind of uphill. Maybe try and make it a nice two putt. You got it. Got it within ten. Probably five, six feet, maybe. Is that Rocco getting ready to tee up? Or? Rocco Sheehan, got a good read. Yeah, he's should, kind of, should know kind of following exactly what the, uh, look That's at that. Really nice play. That's nice, a little yeah. bit past, but yeah, coming uphill. So Maximo, who had a little trouble chipping on, will look to get himself close here at the green on 12. and gets himself kind of in that range there. As so we like to say, they have the, the hole surrounded. <laughs> so let's we'll see what Musto can do here. I mean, this is a big putt for Norton. Ooh. Oh, you could see the body language just trying to read that one in. So Musto with a great approach here at 12. Caldwell here with his second putt. There it Drains is. that nice. Sometimes that second one's a little harder, right? Because yeah. you're getting closer. Nice confidence. So this is a big, uh, Musto, that's a nice job for him. Looking to two putt here 
Oh, just a little short. Maximal looking to finish it out here for the Mustangs. And drains that nicely. So group three through 12. While the fourth group is approaching. See this I'm last not sure group. Who it is, but somebody else is in the woods over here on the left. You got a nice shot coming in. Wow. Nice enough wow. to use yep. orange balls or red balls so we can see them. Yeah. Boy, that came from way out there. That was a terrific shot. Yeah, that's that was about a Norton. 150, yeah, that's the 150 yard marker right there that he was hitting from. Got another one over here, about 90 yards out. Yeah. He's just yeah. going to play it yeah. safely. Yep, and actually, uh, it's a it terrific nice. play. If that'll get up the lip, just not. Nah, but, you know, Joe, that's probably a smart little play, right? You don't want to yeah, have to safe. Is. So, a couple folks approaching. See how far our microphones will take us. You guys are watching that. I'm going to go over and watch the 13th tee and see if I can get a nice angle here. And I'll swing over to 13 to pick up some of this group here. You guys are watching that. Somebody just. Norton, the first one up for Norton here just nailed it. It's like right next to the tee, right next to the, the pin. A really nice shot. That could be Owen Muster who just came off strong here on uh, 12. So he might be just finding, you talk about finding snowballing, his right? His, yeah. his snowballing in the right direction. Yep. That one was short. So it looked like Rocco was safely away, and here's Maximo. Had a little trouble off of the tenth, but hopefully he has settled down here. Let's see if we can Let's start stringing some good shots yeah. together. Sounded nice, and he is looking straight away. So you're trying to look down there, that green. Oh, well done, and he's safely aboard too. Rolling a little bit, but that's a nice shot. So Maximo safely on. And this is Adam Caldwell here. Sophomore is away. Hard to see if there. I know I see yeah, at least I'm two up on the green because I know, and we know one of them's Maximo's. Yeah, and the other one was the, the first guy. So let's. Name again. Uh, Owen Mustos. Yeah. 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 So back here at 12 is this is the final pairing coming through. Oh, that's a nice touch. Left himself a nice easy second, easy putt. I think that's Owen can tell us right there who had that really nice drive. Nice job him for two putting there. That was a great approach. So can tell us is off and done. This ferry only leaves it just a little past, but not by much. Finishes up there, two putts. 
Cole O'Connell. Also a nice touch, just a little short, but leaves himself that little tap in right there. And Sheamus looking to finish it up and is able to do so. So a nice job there by all four. Yeah. Joe two on that, two everybody. putts for everybody. Uh, you know, well read by this final group. I remember, uh, you know, Coach uh, Allen saying that yep. Seamus and Rocco have been playing really well together. Yeah, we told, we asked him about the method of where, who played with who and at what, which one of the foursomes, and he did mention that they had, those two had come in and won a couple of matches for them. So we are through 12 with everybody, and we'll be right back. And here on the uh, approach on 16, the par four playing 402 today. We've seen a couple nice approaches. Yeah, we've got Jacob Sheehan is on the green. And again, this is the first group. This is the second hardest hole in the course. So. We're not sure if Jacob's sitting three or sitting four, but either way, it's a nice approach so shot. Mason Ball here is able to stick that one. Jacob, you're sitting three? Jacob, you're sitting three? What? You're sitting three? No. Four? It's a nice shot, though. So Sean Clary on the far side there. Looks like just off the green, so he's going to try to chip in. The tough little shot right here for Clary. That's a nice touch. That is a nice touch. Wow, that's yeah. a pretty shot. So Clary leaves it nice and close. Toughest, like I said, toughest shot. Yeah. That fringe yep. of the green. Once again, you get you know you get yourself a little nervous there, and, and you let that club do the work. You pick the right club and the right touch, and Clary left himself a nice second shot. You could s hit that one a little too hard, and the people up there in Acapulco would be worried about. <laughs> yeah. Play that off Getting the window. Getting ball in there, nachos. Give that one just a little short. It's another tough green. You know, we've seen that a couple times. There's, you know, a couple of those bounces early on just as soon as you strike it. Yeah, but I mean, it, like this one, it's uphill like the whole way. So you definitely want to be under the hole, and the, the pin is... Pretty close to the front, so there's not a lot of area there to get below the hole. Ball there with his first putt. Uh, leaves himself a nice second. Yeah, he probably wishes he was a little closer, but yeah. still a good putt. So Sheen, I think you said uh, par, he, this is he, par yeah, right here. he was sitting four. So. This would be a nice par putt, par on this hole. Ooh. You just kind of teach that body language there. You know, he's talking to Coach Allen while we're waiting for this group to to arrive, and uh, like I said, they've got a big day tomorrow. You got to get through today, but they've got a four-team quad match. Quad match, yeah, yeah. Tomorrow, so three games up in the up up for grabs. Three wins up for grabs. Yeah, so it's a could be a big big day for the Mustangs for playoff implications. But they got to get through today.
just a bit short there. So big putt here for Mason Ball. Again, you, Joe, you had mentioned as we were trying to get ready for this, it's, it's not like football or hockey or basketball where you have a scoreboard and whatnot, yeah. and you know exactly who's winning and yeah, who's exactly. losing. It's just you really don't know in the times that we've covered these uh, where things stand until you get to that final hole. Terrific two putt there yep. by the sophomore. Um, and uh, yeah, usually it, you have to wait for all four groups to come through to figure out exactly, you know, how close it is and, and then, you and know, what the score is. And so yeah, that's, that's gonna go. Well, they don't ask, they don't ask me to do that portion of it, which <laughs> is fortunate. <laughs> Terrific. Is. I'll tell you, then, the, the times that we have uh, been seeing Norton, and I think another thing that Coach Allen had mentioned is, you know, you can kind of feel body language and maybe momentum starts to swing towards Norton's way. They begin to play with some confidence because, as mentioned, it is quite a mental game. So this group is through 16, and they'll and head the to, the, uh, yeah, to the par 4, 17. And we're here over on the 17 as that first group again is getting ready to tee off there. 17 is also a par four playing 326. Again, it's a nice wide open fairway. Tougher yeah. angle. But, uh, but you can hear that there, that one went, Sheehan's shot went quite left. Kind of had that same problem early on. On can't be good when you hear four. Yeah, yep. That's been kind of the way things got started for the Mustangs on ten, where a number of balls wound up in the driving range, and Mustangs have probably been trying to scramble no, ever Frankie. since. So Sheehan and Sheehan go back That's to Frankie back. Rocco. Which one? They're Is that on Frankie seventeen. Or Rocco? And Clary, who comes in with just under a 39-stroke average, will be next up for the Lancers. As I look behind us, as we're getting ready for Clary here, you can see the group two coming up behind us, and we'll catch that action right after this group finishes up here on 17. Good thing about 17 here and a lot of the back nine is it's it's open where that first hole that we played there's a, you got the driving range where you yep. can go over the fence and out of play or you can you got the creek and if you're off to the right you're on out of play over there but on this one yeah even, 17, if, you, even yes. if you hit the ball to the left you yep. still can play yep from that 18th fairway so ball will be the fourth here to tee off on 17. And he just steps right up and lets her rip. So again, hard to tell exactly where those go based upon our camera angle, but everything seems to at least be playable. Yep, everybody's picking head up out that way. and going for a walk. And then we turn onto and this side. Right, right behind us. Quite a gathering here with that second group. Everybody gathered round nicely. Two on the green, three uh, three on the green, two for Norton, I think. Mustangs have one just off. Again, these are, this is a hard putt. This is one you, you kind of want to get it close. And kind of, I mean, if you make it, you love it, but you don't want to make that second putt a nice long putt. You want to make that in the second one a nice short putt. So Max Conley was way mm -hmm. first and Tommy O'Brien followed quickly. Still left himself about 10 feet for par. This is the sophomore, Griffin Clary, who's eyeing it up here. Certainly a nice approach for him as he was able to put it on the green.
And he leaves himself short on that. And a little quick, catches that outside, but bounces in. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> they don't ask how, they yep. only ask how yep. many. Exactly. So Max with his second putt here. Oh, just, and you can kind of see the way it kind of Bounce peels away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he'll have that. Tommy O'Brien will step in for his second. Also just a little short. Trying to make sure they step over. Reagan's line as he's uh, away here. Oh, That's nice putt. Point. Tell you, I think one of the things that we have seen, at least through these couple holes, is Norton really has started to zone in on their approach shots and their putting. So, group number two is through 16 with three right on their tail as they approach. And we will catch them over on 17. These Norton kids could go right to Northwestern and wear their jerseys to Northwestern. Yeah. yeah. And back over here on the 17 is group two gets ready to tee off. Norton will lead away. As we watch them tee off, Jack is Jack Tolman's over here making sure that we don't get hit by golf balls on the approach shots from 16. So Reagan away. Sounded nice. It's trying to see if he's pointing. And again, I do this as, as usually I should do this before the broadcast starts. It could be Regan. It could be Reagan. <laughs> it could be. So <laughs> to, to his family, I apologize. <laughs> Jack the sophomore, the 41 average. He's played extremely well so far. Again, just the sophomore with his sophomore partner. I go Regan. I mean, where, where are we? Oh, down the bottom? Uh, I would say Regan. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Regan, R-E-G-A-N. Yep. I would say if it's not Regan, if it's Reagan, then they're wrong. <laughs> oh, and Clary is off, and you can hear oh, that right. infamous four. Ooh, a really nice shot. A great approach, approach shot on there by, uh, I want to say it's a Mustang. On 16. Yeah. So actually, it looks like Clary may be, nope, he's picking up his tee. I wasn't quite sure if he was going to have to take a second one, but so that'll be interesting to see if that has any bearing. Again, the hard part, you just don't know what the score is. Um, no. You're trying to read body language as, you know, these guys are coming off of, the green and heading across and was just really kind of hard to tell, which is probably a good thing because oh. you don't need anybody with slumped shoulders. Or I feel like sometimes yeah. you could be hitting, shooting three under and still be slumped shoulders because right. you're That's upset right. about <laughs> only having three under. Everybody thinks uh, about like uh, Jack York, Jack York, coach of the old coach of uh, BC. Yep. Used to say that everybody talks about the shots that they didn't make when they're golfing, <laughs> as opposed to they don't mention the ones that they did make that they shouldn't have. It's <laughs> right. like, yeah, it's like, oh, if I didn't miss that three foot putt. Yeah, but if you made the 35 foot putt. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it all balances out. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so Mustangs finishing up here on 17. So that group is away and we will zip back over and rotate. This is working out quite well as these guys are not wasting any time. We saw this group earlier, Owen Musto and Adam Caldwell for Norton. Maximo, I think 
Rocco Sheehan, right, or the uh, two for the Mustangs on this one. Going right next to the pin, Rocco. I'm having a hard time, Rocco and Frankie. <laughs> I'm just happy I didn't call any of them Paul yet. I don't know how his pa their parents keep them straight. Got Vincent coming up soon too. Slow down ball. And you can see where that hill just kind of took that all the way yep. down. There's a hole at Braintree Country Club that is just like it's a par three, but they call it the long, shortest par five in Massachusetts because the green is so difficult that anybody can, you have to three putt every single time. It's physically impossible not to. So Maximo here is away. Just a slight break there to the left. Left himself a makeable putt. Yeah. And Adam Caldwell, who had that chip from behind the green, is going to let his teammate Owen Musto take his putt. Ah, just a little short. You can see, again, it's kind of like that downhill. You don't want to give it too much juice. No, exactly. Trying to find that touch. So Caldwell comes back uphill. And that's a nice little. Yep, left himself an easy one. Yeah, for the sophomore. Hate to call them easy. It's yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it's easy from where we're standing. Yeah, exactly. Oh, Caldwell there. Nice save. Having chip from behind the green. And two putts his way back out of that. Oh, oh you just kind of wait, wait. And that did not fall for Rocco. Need some of those explosives from yeah, Caddyshack. Yeah, exactly. So this is an important putt here for Max Moy. He had that one real nice one, so he got himself. Ah, nice job. We'll see if Musto can finish it off too. I think he has played well, at least from what we have seen. And he is successful. So he'll get his numbers as group three is on their way over to 17. And I'll tell you, as we're standing here trying to catch him at 17, the golf ball just comes whizzing right by. Didn't hit the camera, so we don't have to worry about trying to porch the uh, the board to see if we need a new camera. As Musto steps in here. We're just looking across the way and we can see the first group of alternates for Norwood is coming down 18. So group number one should not be fairly far behind. And we know that group four is approaching 16 behind us. So One of them is over here under the tree, so we might have to move our golf carts. Nothing quite like that sound of a you know, well-struck like golf I'm, ball. Yep, I'm watching across the way. You could just see after Musto, you know, there was no yelling of four or anything like <laughs> yeah, that. His body language looked like it was straight away. It's hard to tell, but... Yeah, he's hit, so let's he's see what a Maximo lot of does. A lot of good golf shots. Yeah, yeah. That. I think his was one of the ones that we saw that approach at 14. So 
Catch Maximo as he tees off here at 17. You sitting? And Caldwell will step in for Norton. Somebody's stealing our golf cart. Looks like all four are safely away on there on 17. As we get ready for the last group. And back here on the 18th as team number one working their way down the fairway. We've got a couple folks that are just off to the left. I think a couple straight away. Somebody's one, sitting yeah. pretty. They're all in the woods over there looking for, in the trees, looking for somebody's ball. But there's one out here in the yes, fairway yeah. that's only about 60 yards away. Shot there. We are kind of oh, at least halfway settled. decently protected. Ooh, oh, just long. a little bit long and it and bounces and into the off the green. In. It's a nice swing. Uh, Wrong club. Oh, someone coming through the tree. That's Frankie Sheen. Yeah. He's played it safely. And that'll Out of the, the trees and yep. just looking for a nice easy chip. Get himself close and maybe save par. And we got both Norton players are pretty, pretty safe, pretty good shape, pretty good shape. One of them is on this side of the fairway, the yeah. uh, which would be the right yeah. side of the fairway. Yeah, I think that's and that's Mason trees, Ball. The yeah. trees might be, might be trouble, you know, because you can't you can't go straight at it because you're going to be up and. You're going to have some branches in your way. And, he and just that one's coming one actually kind of direction. over our way. So I would kind yeah. of, we're underneath trees. Oh, oh, you got a nice bounce. There we go. It's got a nice bounce, like right in front of us. I but bet you that's how he played it. Mm -hmm. He was going to try. He said, let one away. I heard that hit the, the tree right above us. And I'll play it right out into the middle of the fairway. And Sean Clary is the one who had put that nice shot like you said maybe 60 yards away so that's a good drive yeah got to be about 280 maybe my math is correct well what did I say it was playing today he's within yeah he's within about 60 yards 70 80 yards yeah. 18th Three. is 342 Clary shot here that's a nice second shot oh. too this really is nice shot. Green. Really another, nice this shot. Another tough green, but the pin placement on this one is actually pretty, pretty nice. A lot of times it's it's down towards the front a little more, and that can be really difficult. Now that right there is what they call good cart golf. <laughs> when the both of them are right next to each yep, other. Yep, it's easy to get to. One of the guys I play golf with most of the time, we will literally have at least 10 shots that are within five feet of each other. <laughs> it's, it's pretty impressive. It's probably not in the not place a, it's supposed, supposed to be. supposed to be, but, but at least, yeah, yeah, at least it's together. He's the one in front. The Norton is the one in front. So right here in front of us. She and the lefty will try to chip this up. There you go. Safely up on the green. Good spot. And Ball will try yeah, to do the same tough, thing. Very tough green. Probably want to be more underneath the hole on this one. You don't want to be above it. 
Paul, who got a little bit of help from the tree that is protecting us. Yeah, you said done. you wanted to be That's a little a bit nice below the hole and able to do that. So both Norton players safely on board. Yeah, they probably show each other the line. Yeah, it looks like, yeah, you look at it. Oh. Yeah, that's the tough part about this green. Terrific that job, though, because that, that had gone fairly far into the yeah. into the woods. It looks yeah, like it got a nice bounce back out. I think he dropped one. Oh, did? Oh, yeah, he'd he gone that far. One, okay. But, oh, all right. But, I mean, that's a tough shot because the, there's not a lot of green to work with there. Yeah. He can just, you know, drop it onto the green. Yeah, and yeah. It down. He kind of punched it right on that lip there yeah. and uh, got the roll. Because I was surprised, that, you know, that to see him where he was. I'm like, oh, I must have, it must have bounced back out because that looked like that went in pretty deep. So, Just looking back at the next foursome, it looks like I see four balls right there in the fairway. One, two, three, four. Yeah, I think that's a ball. It's hard to tell. It might be a leaf. And there it comes back. And you can watch it start to roll a little way there, yeah. Not sure how this works. So they come back in. Like, do they know their scores right now, or do they got to add them up? Once I think they they, they, they will certainly know what their scores were, and as they come through, they'll report to their head coach. Yeah, Coach Langmead for Norton was kind enough to send us a lot of the player information earlier today. He's kind of helped us out. Matter of fact, one of the things that he did send us was uh, who was taller and who was... Uh, <laughs> that's what they say. You uh, don't keep score. That's how right. Do you how do you measure yourself against other golfers? By height. <laughs> <laughs> Any old people out there yeah. understand that reference? <laughs> we weren't quite sure what the over-under was on the number of references we could make. How can I be the ball, Danny, <laughs> if you keep talking? We do have four groups left here, come through 18, so there is time. Oh, well, you did have the uh, explosive re yes, the reference explosives, from the, yeah. uh, yep, so. If I kill all the golfers, they'll lock me up and throw away the key. So she in here looking to come back uphill. He'll tap out there. Boy, he didn't miss that by, you know, it's again, kind yeah. of the distance where we are, it's hard to, judge but yep. then you can see the second putt was inches away so would have been nice if they left the flag in we could have seen yeah yeah, yeah. COVID yeah, golf. sense of where things are one of the best things that came out of COVID <laughs> was leaving the flag stick in the <laughs> hole so we didn't have to bend over and pick it up old man golf <laughs> yeah, same thing here just leaving this last one short So again, what's interesting is you know not knowing the score is you just don't know how you know critical these last few putts are. Yeah. That's kind of the uh, hard part about calling golf. Nice job there by Sean Clary. Finish up his round for the day and. Mason Ball will be finishing up as well here. Ah, nice job. So all four finished here with the first group. And we will have to, as mentioned, kind of wait for Scores to come in, numbers to start to be added up, but the traditional handshake is all four played well together. It's kind of an interesting, you know, you got to kind of do your own rules and. Yeah, the, gentleman, the gentleman's yeah, rules. Without question. Yeah. It's nice to see, like, sometimes you see them when they're looking for a ball, and one of the Norton kids will be helping out the Norton yep, kids, or yep. vice versa. You know. They don't do that too much on the hockey rink or the football field. 
Oh, yeah. No, on the rink, they're, they're constantly helping each other out yeah. with words of encouragement. <laughs> exactly. So Conley and O'Brien for the Mustangs approaching. And Clarion. Oh, that's a nice shot out Reagan. of trouble right there. Roll that one right for up For the Lancers. And this is Max approaching here. This is Conley, Max Conley. Yep. It's up in the air. Where is it? Might be off to the right a little bit. Oh, oh it's right on. A nice shot there by Max. It was off to the right, but safely aboard. On the green in two. Yeah. You're hitting fairways and finding greens. It's a nice drive for Tommy O'Brien. Tommy's got his range finder out there. He's looking back to see how long his drive was so we can tell everybody. He's facing the wrong way. Yeah. He's like, how long was that drive? 280? Griffin. I played with Tommy a couple of weeks ago. He didn't pull out the driver too often in the round I played with him. And Griffin Clary here for the Lancers. That's a nice. Good shot. And he is safely aboard putt. as well. That's a tough putt. I mean, that, that's a putt right there. The, those two have given themselves that it's not going to be, that's not an easy birdie putt. So Tommy O'Brien, Joe, as you mentioned, with a nice drive and see what he can muster here. This right here from this Punched distance it. was where he was deadly when I was playing with him. And you that's can see that. Shot. He's a good Well player. done. So a terrific shot there by O'Brien after he drove it straight down the middle. So group number two lumbers up to 18. That one for birdie, Max. Nice job. comes Tommy. Give him a hard time. <laughs> so Tommy, I saw you with a range finder looking backwards. You just wanted to see how long your drive was? <laughs> how long? 270. 270? I guess 280. I was off like a little bit. Nice. <laughs> Very nice. So Jack Regan here just chipping slightly off the green. That's a nice touch. So the sophomore puts it up. So Max, as you mentioned, looking at that birdie attempt right here. Bouncing along, and again, hard to tell. It certainly obviously broke left, but where in relation to the hole, it's yeah, just it kind of difficult to tell from a, here. That's a really, yeah. really difficult putt. Anything close, you'd be happy with. So Clary, about the same distance. Try and read that break to the left as well. And O'Brien, who, uh, what did he say, 270? 270. 270 chipped up here, so nice little chance here. Yeah, He left himself a tough, tough putt for par.
looking back at the fairway, trying to see as we're waiting, trying to see if any how the last four, the next four, the drives went. I don't see too many balls in the fairway. So we'll see what Clary can do here. Tell you, tough green. Yeah, you can see almost as soon as the ball is struck, just the shoulders go drop. Yeah, you don't you don't want to be beside the hole on these greens because you're like punting on a slant. You want to be the below it or above it. Spent below is the best spot. Best spot. And Tommy just left that short. Yep. It's kind of tough off that, right? You have that really nice drive and that second yeah. shot chip, really nice, and then yeah, so it's yeah, they're all leaving this just on the lip here. So that was Jack Regan finishing up his round for the Lancers. Clary looking at his second putt. Again. Again, you can just see the frustration a little bit, right? You're they're all around it, and he actually yeah. his went long. The yeah, other two left them short. So maybe after all this, Max will be able to see what everybody else has done and bury it dead center. Nope. Nope. Wow. I'll tell you that you, if you look a couple there. Last putts as well, they were all just little tiny tap-ins. So, second group done for the day. These four will probably be seeing each other for the next two years, too. Yeah, again, you know, the both teams, we were talking to Coach Allen, you know, he, he'll take most, most of the seniors, and we saw a couple of them playing as alternates earlier today. Sam Gurney, NCM guy, cameraman extraordinaire, but um, there are a number of good sophomores on uh, both squads, so yeah. Norton and uh, Norwood, both young programs. As we get ready for that third group. swing. Oops, somebody just had a punch out. Yeah, Maximo just punched out yeah. onto the fairway. I think this is Owen Musto here yeah. on the approach. It was got some air. Oh. Right there. Yeah, I'll tell you the couple times, Joe, that we've seen Musto, he has played extremely well. Be interesting yeah. to see. Again, we I don't mean, know what happens in between, but Yeah, like he, that shot there, watching him golf, I'm guessing he's not happy with that shot. I mean I would be happy with that <laughs> shot, getting the green on two, but I mean, that's not a long second shot. Probably would have wanted to get a little closer. Like that. That is a beautiful second shot right there. Who's that one? That was the other. Uh, that's Adam Caldwell. Yeah. Again, just another one of those sophomores for Norton. Ooh. Take a look. Oh. That may join uh, Jacob. Sheehan's ball yeah. from earlier. Two Sheehan's back in the woods, yep. related. <laughs> so Caldwell and Musto for the Lancers. And Maximo and Rocco Sheehan rounding out team three for the Mustangs.
And just like that, half the broadcast crew is departed. Joe DeVingo on his way to Mohegan Sun. And if my wife hears this, she's going to be incredibly jealous as he's heading down for the WNBA playoff game, game two tonight. It's Caitlin Clark in town. Fever down 0-1. So Sun hoping to put that away here tonight, but Joe DeVingo... A nice job there by Maximo to get himself on the green. So I will try to bring us home here by myself. But want to thank Joe for coming out and bringing some insight here today. Showing he can not only call hockey games, but he can do a little bit on there on the uh, golf as well as she and tries to come back. So everybody's safely aboard here on 18. Musto away while his teammate Caldwell will hold the stick for him. A long uphill putt here. Straight away. Not bad, gives himself slight downhill. So Rocky, Rocco's got to come back uphill here on this one. Oh, that was a nice touch. Really nice touch there. That's kind of a nice way to end your round. They'll have that tap in to follow. Maximo will see what he can do here with his second. And Joe is talking about that hole. It's either come easier coming uphill. These last few putts can certainly make the difference. It's Caldwell can't finish, so we'll see. Musto, be interesting to see what he posts today. Oh, boy, you miss that, and you just watch as it kind of picks up some speed. So he's going to have to regroup. They're all right around the hole here. Oh, and it hangs and drops for Maximo, so he's got to be happy about that. Caldwell looks to finish. Able to do so. Musto waits for the emergency vehicles to go by, steps in. Oh. That's a, that's a tough one on that because he had really had a nice approach and a uh, fair number of putts there. So the old hats come off, the hands get shaken. Trying to figure out who's got what for a score. And we'll wait to uh, catch the numbers if we get a chance before uh, this is all over. And we'll get ready for the final grouping. And looking down here at the fairway of 18 on the approach, Cantillus and O'Connell for Nor uh, from, sorry for Norton. We're trying to pick up a couple of approaches here. We had mentioned Owen Cantillas when we saw him tee off on 10 that uh, works here at the country club, so maybe right at home. So I see one Norwood in the middle of the fairway. I think we had another shot come behind us. Another one here 
sitting down in front of us. I think that was Perioli. So the final group coming up here on to 18. So we got one up on the green, one in the sand. Chip right here. And I think this is Cole O'Connell. A little chip there, hoping to slow that ball down. And he'll be safe there. This could be Kentellis right here with another chip. Also on very nicely. Nice little finish there. Seamus tries to punch that out, is able to get the roll onto the green. So everybody safely aboard here as the final group on the final hole. They're on the far side. It was O'Connell was trying to put that off from the off the green and didn't quite take as much as he wanted. Seamus with his putt gets himself a little closer. And Rocco will follow suit. I, I will say this about this last group here. Boy, they are not wasting much time. So Rocco taps out, he'll be done. O'Connell here on his second putt. Oh, I get a little bit past that. It picks up a little bit of speed. I will at least give this group a little bit of thanks for leaving that flag pin in. Gives us a better sense of exactly where they are. So Cantillus. Oh, that's a nice putt. So nice job there by Owen. As he'll finish up. Oh, Seamus for his. Can't quite finish and be able to tap that in. And our final one of the day is O'Connell. Leaves it just a little short. And that will do it. So all 16 golfers plus the three alternates that uh, Norwood brought with them today have completed here at the Norwood Country Club. Weather held out. Not a bit of, not a bit of wind or anything like that. Probably ideal conditions for these guys. So we're not quite sure exactly what the score is as of yet. And again, it's, it's just so hard to tell. You can't read body language. You really have no idea uh, how everybody did, but they are finished. And haven't seen Coach Allen in, in a little bit, so I do see Coach Longmead for Norton's got his guys gathered around.
Well, that'll do it here from the Norwood Country Club as Norton comes in and takes this one. 243 with a win. Norwood comes in at 260. So the Mustangs will fall, fall to 6-5 and five on the year. Norton goes to 9-3. and three. But as mentioned, boy, I tell you, these Mustangs have got a big day tomorrow. And you can see Coach Allen behind us already talking to his troops. They've got a big three-team matchup coming up tomorrow where it could be some big wins for the Mustangs to kind of work their way towards playoff time here for golf. So for Joe Devingo, who had to leave early for us, I want to thank him for coming down and, and working with us to call this game. Ron Marshall, see behind the camera. Jack Tolman getting us all these fine shots. I'm Mark Hoover for NCM Sports. Thanks so very much for joining us today here at the Norwood Country Club.